General Secretary of Parliament informs Elections Commission that the seat of Geeta Kumara Singha has been annulled. SLFP appoints a co-cabinet spokesperson. Nurses' trade unions allege that the GMOA has taken away their right to education. Central Bank Governor comments on fiscal management. It's one thing to spend your, spend your reserves if you can actually defend the currency. But if you waste your reserves and then have to depreciate the currency anyway, clearly that's, that's a no-brainer. You don't, you don't do that. Still Sir John Keel's International Vesak Zone to open tomorrow. Sacred relics reach Colombo. Hello there, very good evening and welcome to your Prime Time News Bulletin. I'm Shane Silva. And I'm Nicola De Zerza. We start off with our top story. President Maitripala Sirisena officially declared open the state Vesak festival in Kegal today. The festival was organized at the Vatarama Sri Arahanta Maliadeva Rajama Temple in Kegal. We are aware that serious crimes such as murder, burglary and rape are attributed to the use of drugs. Because of drug abuse, children between the ages of 15 and 17 have been directed to rehabilitation centers and hospitals. At times, they are patients inside their own homes. As a Buddhist nation, we must understand this matter. Parents and adults must be more focused and must act with responsibility. The government must identify this and act positively. These matters are undermined when egos take the reins. This leads to people thinking of only themselves. Therefore, we are aware of the level of degeneration of the society. As mentioned in your headlines a few minutes back, the Sirsa John Kills International Vesak Zone will commence tomorrow. The Salvagnya relics and the relics of the Maharahateros, which will be placed at a special enclosure at the Vesak Zone, arrived in Colombo today. <laughs> The procession carrying the sacred relics commenced its journey this morning from the Yakala Sri Salila Dasana Rama Vihara and reached the Kirillavada town. A special religious observance took place at the Pahala Imvulgoda Vijayavardhana Sri Mahavihara. The procession thereafter moved to the Kadavata town. A collective of businessmen from Kadavata sponsored the floral tributes that were released from a helicopter while special pujas were also performed. The 
It feels like we are in the presence of Lord Buddha. We will never forget this occasion. We are thankful to the Sirisa Media for giving us this great meritorious opportunity. In ancient times, the gods also paid floral tributes from the air. The businessmen from Kadavata have performed Saturday today. Capital Maharaja this initiative by the Capital Maharaja Organization Limited is one that brings together all communities to bring about reconciliation. For days you have been traveling under the scorching sun without any luxuries. You will receive merits for these deeds and you will be strengthened. The persons who organize in this endeavor should receive all merits. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I pray that you all be blessed for this great deed. The Silas John Keels International Vasag Zone, which will commence tomorrow, will feature dancers, devotional songs, puppet shows, and a special parade organized by the Sri Lankan Navy. A pandol depicting the Kundala Kesi Jataka story, created with the use of more than 200,000 light bulbs, will add color to the Vasag Zone. <laughs> The International Vesak Zone is the largest Vesak Zone in the country and this is where you are given the opportunity to pay reverence to a large number of relics. Visit the Surasa Vesak Zone on the 10th, 11th and 12th and pay homage to these sacred relics. The Secretary General of Parliament, Dhammika Dasanayaka, has informed the Elections Commission that the parliamentary seat of Geeta Kumar Singha has been annulled in line with the Court of Appeal verdict. Secretary General of the UPFA, Mahinda Maravira, said PSA Nagamage has been recommended to fill the vacant post. The General Secretary of Parliament said that the Chairman of the Elections Commission was informed yesterday that the MP post was left vacant following the ruling. Chairman of the Commission, Mahinda Desha Priya, confirmed that he was informed of the matter. He said that the matter will be discussed with the members of the Commission in order to take a decision. Meanwhile, lawyers representing Geeta Kumar Singha have filed an appeal at the Supreme Court against the Court of Appeal, ruling which disqualified her as an MP. She requests the Court of Appeal ruling to be suspended until the petition is considered and a decision is reached. Geeta Kumar Singha met with the Chairman of the Elections Commission as well. PSA Nagamagi is to fill the vacant parliamentary seat. What are your thoughts? I have nothing to say. Anyone can think of whatever they wish. Have you discussed this with anyone? I do not think that I need to reveal all details of my life to the media. If you lose your parliamentary seat, will you continue to engage in politics? We will decide in the future. Do you have an idea of defecting to the government? If I defected earlier, I will not have this issue. I have no faith in anyone. Former Minister Pearson Agamage is next in line. I will recommend that he be appointed to fill the vacant post. After the May Day, a number of decisions have been made. This is an opportunity given to a true SLFP member. If it is a murder case, the accused has provision to appeal during the period of the trial. A writ order was obtained against her. The only way to stop the Parliamentary General Secretary or the Elections Commissioner is through a Supreme Court order. 
We too have heard that there are some ministers who have dual citizenship. However, anyone has the right to go to court to prove that. Those matters cannot be revealed here. We have details about a lot of information, but we cannot reveal them. <laughs>
you know, what about expenditure? Why aren't we focusing on reducing expenditure? Our expenditure, total expenditure, comes out at about 20% of GDP. But there are issues in relation to the composition and quality of public expenditure. Are we spending money in the areas we should be spending money on? And the money that is allocated, is it being spent effectively? The supplementary, the supplementary allocation of 330 million rupees tabled in Parliament to buy vehicles for six ministers came under debate in the News First Face the Nation program last night. Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Harsha De Silva was questioned on this matter. Each individual minister must prioritize what he or she is spending his or her money on. I have an allocation. Have I bought a uh, car? No because that is not priority. Some of these ministers who have new cars don't need new cars. I mean, let me be quite blunt. You can drive around in the cars some of these people have. So I am not necessarily in support of buying brand new cars for every minister, every ministry. Some of the ministers, some of the ministries don't have. And because they have been recently established, and perhaps they need. So therefore, I, I cannot explain this, and I'm not in favor. Um, that is my personal view. It was revealed before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry today that the governor of the Central Bank has the authority to change the decisions reached by the tender board. Testifying on oath, Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe, Deputy Governor at the Central Bank of Sri Lanka, said that the governor of the Central Bank whoever he may be, has the authority to change the decisions of the Market Operations Committee as well. During the cross-examination, attorney at law Harsha Fernando suggested to the witness that the central bank deliberately raises interest rates. The witness, however, disagreed. It was also suggested before the commission that potential abuse of the private placement system was stopped after the method was removed from operation by former governor Arjuna Mahendan. Council Fernando pointed out that a monetary board paper dated the 27th of November 2009 read that the monetary board had sought to borrow funds from the EPF for open market operations, an act not permitted under the Monetary Law Act. However, the witness stated that following such a procedure gave an additional income to the employees' provident fund. In lieu of the international WESA celebrations, the Commission will not convene on Friday. The Commission will once again convene on Monday, where evidence from Dr. Nandalal Virasinghe will be cross-examined by Attorney at Law Chanaka Silva, who is representing former Governor Arjuna Mahendran. From the Presidential Commission of Inquiry, appointed to investigate and inquire into the Treasury bond issue, Amzul Farzan for News First. Addressing a media briefing at the Central Bank today, Governor Indrajit Kumar Swami commented on the action taken against the mismanagement of funds of the Employees Provident Fund amounting to 11.5 billion rupees. Now, when it comes to the EPF transactions, first we have to establish beyond doubt and in a way that will stand up in court that there has been misconduct. That is what we are doing. When we have established if there is misconduct, then we will certainly hand it over to the, to the law, law enforcement. The report available in the public domain is a leaked report, not an official one. One can assume that the CID is carrying out its own investigation. But we have received word that two members of the monetary board should be interdicted. <laughs> That is a wrong report. I was there, I'm telling you. I was there. Let us follow the central bank procedure as it is laid out. Is it right to carry out investigations while they remain in their posts? Or will they be transferred? Yes, officers of the EPF have been transferred. An assistant governor has also been transferred. Just because we changed them doesn't mean that they were guilty of wrongdoing. However, the current team is different. Then, then in the team mega different. Then his report, the monetary board, will give to an external inquiry panel. 
who can then look into those matters. So we have initiated action, but we have to have a process, which is fair. It was also revealed during the media briefing held today that the central bank is in the process of implementing a new auction system for the government securities market aimed at making treasury bond transactions more transparent. Describing the system as an underwriting system, Governor Indrajit Kumar Swami described the system as one which resolves the problems faced through the auction and direct placement system. The central bank hopes to roll out the system which has been formulated with advice from the World Bank, the IMF and the US Treasury by July this year. The joint opposition says a Supreme Court interpretation will be sought on the signature place by former central bank governor Arjuna Mahendran on local currency notes. Singapore. The position of the Singapore constitution is that dual citizenship is not allowed. According to the Sri Lankan constitution, every public office is required by the constitution to take an oath or make an affirmation when assuming duties of his office. Arjuna Mahendran has revealed before COPE that he did not take an oath. Yet, being a citizen of Singapore, Arjuna Mahendran has placed his signature on the currency notes. His initials are visible on the 100 rupee note as well. Therefore, the issue is this. Does a foreigner have the legal right to place his signature on the currency notes, which is an important tool for the country's financial system? Minister Lakshman Kiriala or anyone else cannot decide on the validity of those notes. Therefore, we will seek a Supreme Court interpretation. <laughs> Sri Lanka's first ever governor was an American citizen. The current governor of the UK Central Bank is a Canadian citizen. There is no issue. He was appointed by the president under a certain process. That process has been followed and there is no issue. Hari, no problem. I have to care now. All all currency issued by the central bank is legal tender. The Sri Lanka Tauhid Jamaat organization convened a media briefing in Colombo today. Kalkuda Pradeshi. An alcohol distillery is being built in Kalkuda. The central government has given the permission without the permission of the provincial council. So why did they give permission? Arjuna Mahendran was named as one of the chief suspects of the central bank bond scam. What is happening with the good governance? This is against the morals of the country. This affects the reputation of Sri Lanka. They are not making an effort to shut down the bars. Instead, they are misleading the general public. The Central Committee of the Government Medical Officers Association convened to discuss the matter relating to private medical colleges. Meanwhile, nursing unions allege that the GMOA has taken away their right to education. The GMOA meeting was chaired by its president, Dr. Anurudha Padanya, and future trade union actions were discussed. The joint committee has agreed to the two-week grace period. The deadline is on the 29th of May. Today, the Central Committee vested power with the Executive Council to take any decision after the expiration of this grace period. <laughs> Dr. Padanya never speaks of the Saitam issue. He has fallen into a trap placed by Mahindra Rajapaksa. We did not mind him falling into that trap. We did not mind his desire to contest the polls. However, we will not allow him to do it using the people as bait. The Supreme Court decided to consider the appeal filed by the GMOA in relation to Saitam on the 31st of this month. On the 31st of January, the Court of Appeal ordered the registration of a Saitam student with the Sri Lanka Medical Council after considering a case filed by her. However, the GMOA filed an appeal against the ruling with the Supreme Court and request an interim injunction. Speaking to the media, nursing unions commented on how the GMOA is taking away their right to education. The GMOA is attempting to take away the educational and professional rights of all others. By doing so, they speak of the standard of the medical degree. At this moment, we have an issue. We request for clinical practices for supplementary medical sciences. We are not being provided with the practice at the Peradenia and Candy hospitals based on the influence of the GMOA. 
Nursing graduates and the others are being deprived of this opportunity. This is a disgraceful act. If the GMOA is speaking of the standard of the MBBS, they also have a responsibility of acting in a way that the other professions are not obstructed. The Mahindra Rajapaksa government and the present government have failed to provide clinical practice to the students from Peradeniya at the Kandy and Peradeniya hospitals. When the decision was made, the Director General of Health Services takes the decision according to the needs of the GMOA. I wish to ask the Minister and the Ministry of Health as to why they cannot assign clinical practice to Kandy and Peradeniya. The Director General of Health Services has failed to enact that decision. There are other trade unions like the one of Venerable Murutetuve Anadathero. They too have demands which are common. Are they not involved in this? <coughs> Venerable Murutetuve Anadathero is one individual. He announced an anti sitem protest on the 13th and 14th of March. He cited the demands of the nursing service. However, it was a failure. Participating in a discussion recently, Sadhguru Jaggi Vasudev, a visionary Indian yogi who is also the founder of the Isha Foundation, made the following observations on the social phenomena of strike actions. You want to build a dam? There's a protest. You want a nuclear project? There's a protest. Thermal project? Protest. Windmill? Protest. But everybody wants everything. In their homes, they want all the gadgets, they want twenty-four hours power, they want everything going. This is because we are only looking at the problems and we have not taken up the challenge of creating solutions in our minds. I think this is a kind of a, a pre-independence hangover because Mahatma Gandhi brilliantly designed a, a revolt against the British not by killing them, not by shooting at them, not by bombing installations but simply by stopping activity, band, hartal, satyagraha came from there. It was a brilliant device for those days because we were conquered. But even today, if you want to become a leader, I'm just telling you this is a secret, okay? Suppose you want to become a political leader, don't try to do… don't try to build a road, build a dam, do this, do that, no. Gather one hundred of your fans and block a highway. Make our lives miserable, you will become a leader. Yes, unfortunately yes. You stop the train, you stop the road, you stop the cut the water, cut the electricity, you will become a leader. If you make something happen, you will get ignored of course. Making the nation go and making the nation stop are two different kinds of technologies. Mahatma Gandhi mastered the art of making the nation stop and it was contextually the right thing to do for those times because we were being ruled by somebody else. But we are still doing the same thing. State governments are demanding that they must have a right to call for a band. Band means closure. <laughs> I cannot understand how an administration can call for a band. <laughs> but they are actually saying it's their right to call for a band. Close down something and you will rise in your prominence. This must change. We should never identify people who stop something in this country as leaders. This must be done by all the citizens. Whoever stops something in this nation should never ever be our leader. Whoever makes things happen in this country, he must be the leader, isn't it? Doesn't this show that you should think, think again, think again and again before casting your vote? Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi is due to arrive in the island on Thursday to participate in the International Vesak Festival. A special drill was held today on the security plan for the visiting Premier. Since the Indian Premier is also due to tour Hatton, a camera has captured the manner in which Indian helicopters practiced landing in the area. A correspondent said that officials of the Indo-Sri Lanka security contingents, as well as members of the organizing committee of the Hatton event, participated in the rehearsals. The National Unity Front convened a media briefing today. Made this land was purchased by late leader of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, M. H. Amashra, for 11.25 million rupees. After making the purchase, he passed away. The funds of the late leader were held by current chief minister of the eastern province, Nazi Wahamad. 
All the lands and funds were under the name of this individual. The deed was written six months after the death of Ashraf. This deed, which has been distorted, has not been taken before court. This is a crystal clear theft. He cannot hold the post of chief minister because of this. We call on the president to appoint a commission or a committee to inquire into this and take steps to remove the chief minister from his post. Azad Sali also made a revelation regarding the individual who created these documents. Look at the witness signatures directors of the Carson Cumberbatch company have signed here. Their signatures have been cut off and two new signatures have been placed. They are Karyapa and Nizam. Both of them have given their addresses as the address of the deed. This land was brought by the leader of the SLMC, but the deed was finalized six months after his demise. This is a theft and this should not have been done by a lawyer. The president has announced 25 people who will be appointed as president's councils. Nizam Karyapa is among that list. He is a former mayor of Kalmunay. A memorandum, a memorandum of understanding was signed between the Sri Lanka Institute of Architects and Kevilton Electrical Products Private Limited today. Through the MOU, Kevilton Electrical Products Private Limited joins the Sri Lanka Institute of Architects as one of the event partners for the quarterly general meeting of the Institute. The MOU was signed by CEO of Kevilton Electrical Products Private Limited, Anil De Silva, and the President of the Institute of Architects, D.H. Vijay Wardhana. Well, that's a wrap of your primetime news for tonight. Thank you for joining us. For the News First team, I'm Nicola Dezoiza. And I'm Shane Silva. Take care and good, good night. night.